Today, we're gonna mod the most popular keyboard ever, according to Amazon anyway, the Red Dragon K552. Now, I'm sure most of you already know this, but just in case, it's a TKL keyboard, which means there's no numpad. Semi hot swappable, they're out to move sockets, which means you can't just put any switch in there, but. I mean, for $40, you can't really complain. And as you can see, I went with the Otamu red switches, although we will be replacing these. Anyway, here's what the board sounds like right out of the box. Pretty bad, right? Super pingy too, for whatever reason. Now, before we can mod the keyboard, we first off have to take it apart, starting with the keycaps. Next up, take out all the switches. Now I actually managed to break like four or five housings doing this. If you just like me plan on replacing the switches, I wouldn't worry about it. If you wanna lube the Otomu switches though, take them out very carefully, because for whatever reason, they break quite easily. Next thing on the list, opening up the case, starting with these two screws on the back. And then after that, there's like 18 more of those on the other side. Disconnect the PCB. I actually had to use a little flathead screwdriver for this. Take out the PCB and plates, and then finally remove the stock stabilizers and throw them somewhere where the sun doesn't shine. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I couldn't be bothered trying to fix the stock stabilizers. Instead, picked up some Duroc plate mount stabilizers, clipped them, wholly modded them, looped the housings with Crytox 205 grade zero, and then finally put dielectric grease on the wires. Next up, the PCB. First thing I did was the Tempest tape mod, which basically just means I put tape on the back of the PCB. I think I used duct tape myself. I honestly don't think it matters what you use. I see a lot of people use this blue tape. I don't know what it is. I don't know where to get it. I'm sure you can find something. And then after that, I did the PE foam mod, which is where you put a layer of PE foam between the switch and the PCB. Makes the keyboard sound a bit more marbly, a bit more premium, definitely worth it with these cheaper boards. And for those wondering, yes, I use a print stick to keep the PE foam in place. Makes it a lot easier to cut around the edges, and also makes it a lot easier to cut out room for the stabilizers. Now, as far as case mods go, I only did three. I put a layer of Noiko 80mm sound detonator at the bottom. Topped it off with a layer of packaging foam. I honestly think it might be the foam the keyboard came in. Couldn't tell you, had it lying around the place. 
And then finally, the O-ring mod, which is where you put O-rings between the screw and the plate and the standoffs in the PCB. Now, because the screws in the K552 are quite a bit bigger than, say, the GK61 or RK68, in both cases, I went with the silicone O-rings that are 4mm by 1mm by 1.5. You can find these on Amazon, by the way. For the switches, I went with the Akko Lavender Purple switches. I showed off, I want to say, two weeks or so ago. If you haven't seen that short yet, go check it out after the video. Lubed, of course, with Crytox 205 Grade Zero. And for those wondering about the keycaps, those are Akko Psittacus keycaps. Do me a quick favor, drop a like in the video, subscribe if you do. Let me know down below what other keyboard switches or keycaps you'd like me to check out. And without further ado, the after sound test. 